Now tell me, yeah. so you come back to Zimbabwe, it's a it's a different country, it's a different name of a country. Uh, you know, it's it's this very in a sense, very new nation. Right. You know? Yeah. I come I, I come back to Zimbabwe to a job. Mm -hmm. I come back to, to Zimbabwe to a job. Somehow, uh, Summers, Rob Summers, that you know, you probably know Rob Summers. Yeah. Yeah, Rob Summers was the was the deputy deputy uh, deputy dean at the medical school. Yes, right. He had, he had heard about me from somewhere. I don't know where. Mm -hmm. So he, he when he had when 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 before my father died, he had been in touch with me. Okay, so, you know, and I met him. I met with him in London. And he told me that, um, listen, we would like you to come when you when you finish. We would like you to come, you know, come come to Zimbabwe, come back home, mm -hmm. okay. But of course, I didn't disclose to him that I had gotten a job with the WHO to go and work on oncocerciasis. So when my father died, I had to come back home. At least uh, when I just you know reactivated that up, you know, that interest mm -hmm. at the medical school, and that's how I come back to the medical school. That's how I come back to Godfrey Huggins Medical School. Yes. And that has a story of its that own, book. right? <laughs> yeah. It's Godfrey Huggins Medical School. Yes. Full of real roadies. Yeah. It's got its people. A lot of them. Mm. Exactly. A lot of them. I did, it, I then found out later. A lot of them, soon after independence, who were consultants, whites, mm -hmm. were absorbed into the medical school. Okay. Yes, they were absorbed into the medical school. Mm -hmm. I got to know this from the from professor of clinical pharmacology, who was kind of liberal. He, when I joined him, he kind of warned me, and he said, "But listen, but this is the situation here. So you have to, you know, you have to, you have to take it easy. You know, wow. you have to take it easy because this is the kind of mentality that's here and whatnot. So." So it was very nice, but but fortunately, I was also very young, and I, you know, I had, I, had, I, 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 I didn't give a damn. Yeah, I would say whatever was on my mind. But so, he, so, so tell me something. Having been in the UK, did that shape your, your sort of the political oh, yes. nature of of how oh, you were yes. thinking? Then you became more oh, nationalist. Yes. I would imagine exactly. <laughs> no, exactly. You, yeah. you know, you can imagine. You're in it. You are in a, You're been at a medical. You're been at a school mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in in departments where people where you, you are the only black. Yeah. Right. You are mm -hmm. the only black, and people had the attitudes. So you had to toughen. Yes. So I'm now coming back home, my mm -hmm. own home. Yeah. And, but, I and myself, still, I, you you have to live with that. Exactly. But I said I was not going to accept it. Mm -hmm. You know, I had toughened myself. So I, I'll tell you a, a, a good a, a good experience. The professor says says to me, "You were used to play golf every Thursday. So this particular day, um, uh, one th what, after do this particular Thursday, he said, "Listen, I must. I I don't want to miss this. I mean, uh, I I had not finished all my in my lectures. Why don't you go and uh, give a lecture? Mm -hmm. This is the final year." Uh, final year, um, no, there were fifth year students. Mm -hmm. So I get there, I get there, and uh, I just go straight into the lecture. I, I walk into the lecture room, they, these guys with their pulsating biceps, they've got their legs on the, on the table. Yes. So I ignore that. So I just continue, I uh, start talking. In, in 10 minutes into my lecture, one of them, Say stop. He said, "Excuse me. Who are you?" 
So I said to I said to him, now I'm, um, I'm I'm an African that has been picked up by Professor um, <laughs> Mike 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 Riley from yeah. the streets to come and tell talk to you about. I can't remember what the subject was. Yeah. So slowly they started taking their feet from the desk, <laughs> right? And I remember there were only 10, 10 blacks there. Yeah. They started clapping. <laughs> and I went straight into Sean and he said, why, why are you clapping? <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, you know, I, I mean, these were, these were guys who had gone for call out. Yeah, they were from they, the army, you know. To go yeah. For board with, yeah. Yeah. Yes. It, it, yeah. Yes. Mm. Mm. So, so, and, so, and also so being socialized you, to to the fact exactly. that you know they were the the ruling class they were better than everybody else exactly mm -hmm. and even in, even in the department itself in mm -hmm. the department itself one of my um you know, you know um one of my colleagues in the department told me that listen all the equipment in the labs is mine you don't touch it and if you want to touch it you must come and ask me for, for permission wow and then i said to him i'm not doing that I'm not going to, I'm not, don't worry, I'm not going to need, I'm not going to need your permission. I'm not going to need your, your equipment. Yes. So that was the kind of environment that I, I came into. Okay. You know, and yeah. then at that time, Go university on. governance was changing. Mm. The university governance was changing because at that time, a professor could hire and fire a member of staff. Mm. But when Kamba came in as vice chancellor, he changed that. He brought in the American system of chairmanship, and you can still have a professor. So the chairman would sort of um, be the yeah, would, would sort of do the administrative job. And what yes. The professor would be the one who would run with the academic. Yeah. So he changed that. Yeah. All right. Uh, so that what, sort of, what about outside of work? What's happening in the rest of the country at, at this stage? Well, remember. I remember outside of the country, Zimbabwe at that time mm -hmm. was, yeah, was the darling of the world. Mm -hmm. There was so many, there was so much uh, developmental aid that was coming into the country. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was vibrant. And I can tell you, right, there were so many job opportunities for black Zimbabweans in international organizations. No one would take it. No one wanted to go out. Everybody wanted was comfortable was so, in this new country. Exactly. Mm. Everybody was so excited, saying, "Now we've come to rebuild our country." It was it, honestly, it was really, it was really something else. An amazing. 1980, yeah. 1980 to 1985, mm. those five years, yeah, where we, Zimbabwe was a, a land of milk and honey. Wow. It's only when that 1985. The Intumbani, you yes. know, all that it started, mm. you know, and all that uh, things just started going. Then never. The first oh. five years, I mean, I tell you, they were out of this world. Yeah. So, and then in term in terms of your research interests at that stage, right. uh, so you've um, you've done this cardiovascular pharmacology. Is it is it changing back to natural products to the? Okay. Yeah. Right. What what made me oh by the way now I just um, uh, in retrospect what made me go into cardiovascular was because my father died of cardiomyopathy so oh, when man. I when I yes my father died of cardiomyopathy and I when I came back when I spoke to my supervisor eventually he said no okay why don't you do this but anyway so I come uh, to, I start come back home and I'm told the equipment that's there. I cannot touch it. So I said to myself, remember, I still have my interest in, now, now I'm very clear now on uh, CNS drugs. Mm -hmm. I want to go back and try and understand, you know, um, the, 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 CNS, the CNS drug, I mean, the drugs that act on the CNS. Mm -hmm. Now in the process, I, I, I then also start reading Professor Gilfran's books and papers, mm -hmm. where he was talking about, um, you know, African traditional uh, traditional medicine and and how what they do and all that. And boom, he then takes me into divination. 
Okay. Okay. How uh, yes? How how it's done? You know how traditional healers. You know. You know. Yeah. Do bone, their yeah. Uh, do their work. Yes. Mm. To do their work, and then it, so it takes me now into 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 psychoactive drugs. Okay. But they take me back now into psychoactive okay. drugs of ethno origin. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when it takes me back into drugs of ethno origin, the, the psychoactive drugs of ethno origin, my goodness, I then I find myself going into anthropology. I find myself going into sociology. I find myself going into all sorts of things, trying now to understand African traditional medicine. So I run, I run, I run with that now aggressively. In my very first paper that I wrote in the, in the, in the Journal of Social Science and Medicine was on that. Okay. Wow. Yes, it was, it, it was on that. And then also at the, at the same time, Professor Gilfan gets so interested in what I'm doing. So we chat. Yeah, and this is a real he, legend. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he comes, Professor Gilfan. Mm. He, he encourages me to write to, to, to write some articles in the South African in the uh, in South African, African general, general medicine. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I write I, I I write a paper there. I, I write a paper. I, I do investigation or uh, some studies on on on, on crocodile bile. Okay, and and yeah. that's supposed to be poisonous, right? It's it's exactly a, yeah <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm having a chat with Professor um, Professor Gifford, but listen, continue doing it. So I go and um, do some studies on 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 on, on crocodile. I go and get some crocodile bio from the crocodile farms in mm -hmm. in in in, in Kariba and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Lo and behold, I find out no. I do some experiments with fish, okay, yeah. because the bio yeah. The bile, you know, gets into fish if it's poisonous. Yes, goes through the the scales, and if it's poisonous, so the fish die. They didn't, okay. And then I do I do my experiment with some baboons at the animal house, and at um, you know at um, no baboon no baboon died. I do okay. you know so it's a myth. No. <laughs> Wait, I'm still <laughs> going there. So I go back. I go back to to to. To the traditional healer. No, no, no. I go back to 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 Kariba. Yeah. And I said, but listen, because they are the ones who are providing you with the crocodile bile. Yes. So I, I asked them, why you, why, 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 why do you have so much? Because I'm thinking these these are the people that are providing the crocodile bile, which is killing people. But no, they were exporting crocodile bile to China as an aphrodisiac. Wow. Yeah. So it's actually not poisonous. It's no, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Because I mean, in no. in Shona in Shona cosmology, that's it, it, the it, most toxic thing that you know you use to eliminate no, 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 no. Your enemies. And then and then I, I I then go back to evolution. It is it is less constituents than you and I. The crocodile bile is good. Is we you and I will got twenty four constituents. The crocodile, the bile from a crocodile has got 18. Okay. Yes. So, you know, so, so, so it's, it's, it, it is not. So, you know, this myth, this myth about crocodile bile, so, you know, it's being But they, they probably water. mix it with, they probably mix it with other toxins, right? But of course. Yes. That's when I went back now, started working with, with the traditional healers. Mm -hmm. That's when I came across things like cantaridine. Yes. The blister beetle. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's when I came across things like Bufan Distica, which is highly poisonous. Yeah. That's when I came across, you know, euphobia ingens. Mm -hmm. That's when I came across a lot of other very poisonous substances. Strychnos. Exactly. Strychnos from, from the seed. Mm -hmm. Of, of, of Matam, you know, of, of, of Matamba. Yeah, stuff. strychnos, yeah. Okay. Yes. Wow. That's where it's, yeah. Mm. <laughs> that's when I that's when I began to understand. <laughs> you know that and then I went deep now into traditional medicine, beginning to try and, and unravel a lot of other things that they were doing, you know, uh, particularly uh, 
uh, in case of um, you know uh, traditional birth attendants, you know this idea of putting some stuff on the fontanella, yeah. and then I discovered that no, it was then it was causing you know um, um, gangrene in a and lot salis, of salis, 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 exactly mm -hmm. exactly right with some pediatricians colleagues I stopped that because they were. Because you know the you people did not I didn't even know that when it's bulging, it is because of because of uh, it, it, it's because of the brain has been infected. Oh, okay. right. It, it's, yeah, yeah. It, it's okay. it's an infection. Mm -hmm. When it when it's when it's depressed, it is because of dehydration. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So we stopped that. Mm. So all yeah. that now, mm. yeah. So but it's all, it's all, now, I mean, that's interesting because it's so central to, if you like, Shona and African obstetrics, right? Uh, it, it actually right. is used to tell the, the health of the, you know, the, the, the baby. baby. Yeah. 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 Yes. With the, so the treatment itself might be controversial, but at least it's true. It's a, it's a diagnostic for, for the baby. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. you know what was causing the gangrene? You know what was causing the gangrene? The gangrene was in babies was being caused because that paste that was put on the fontanella was mixed with them um, with them um, with powdered milk in order for it to stick on the fontanella. Right? Really? On the fontanella, then you would get egot, egot, you know, a, a fungi that yeah, that would produce egot alkaloids that then okay. would diffuse into the baby's body. And get All to right. the extremities and cause yeah. a vasoconstriction. Yeah. So, so I mean, in my part of uh, the the world, they would use some level of cow dung, I think, which actually, in a yeah, sense, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah is, is in a sense more sterile. <laughs> if you oh, definitely. Yeah. Oh no, no, of course. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. But because but, the fact. Mm, yeah, okay. uh, but maybe it just a little bit on traditional healers, uh, and I know you've in in the book uh, on um, uh, the continued relevance of um, traditional practices. knowledge. Yeah, mm. what, what is what is your take in general on on traditional healers and their practice in pharmacopoeia? To to be quite honest with you, over the years, even even here in South Africa, mm -hmm. uh, you know, once you go into that into that area, there's a thin line that divides it with politics, from politics. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. there's a thin line that divides. Yeah. From my experience in Zim, I then found out uh, that, uh, 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 you know, traditional medical practice, as you as you are aware. It has got different practitioners. Mm -hmm. There are those that just do the di divination. Mm -hmm. There are those that are spiritual, and there are those that are herbalists. Yes. And then at times you can find uh, all these in one person. Now, over the years, I have found that all that is being used uh, uh, for convenience by the politicians. So I said to myself, I think I would rather work on something that can be authenticated using a Western scientific paradigm. Because mm -hmm. I don't I don't want to go into spiritualism, which, which I don't understand. Yeah. So let, let me just go into herbalism. Herbalism. Because as you know, mm -hmm. a lot of drugs, 25% mm -hmm. of Come drugs from that. Yes. Are, are from that. So it makes it easier. Whether yeah. then somebody, yeah, whether somebody dreams and all that, uh, that that's a that's a separate. Yeah, game. but I think I think um, I don't understand. Yeah, I think as with the colonial authorities, post-colonial authorities have also exploited uh, and manipulated mm. to an extent, uh, you know, mm. traditional leaders as well as traditional mm. healers to to their own um, advantage. Of, yeah. Yeah. So yes. okay. No. So so that's good then. So maybe um, just. So what's your continuing interest right now from a research perspective? Oh, right now I'm I'm still into I'm still into psychoactive, 
right? Okay. Psychoactive things, yeah. right? Uh, and you know the story of cannabis, this whole issue about the excitement. Mm -hmm. So my, my interest now in as far as, as that is concerned, I am now looking at um, hoping against hope that I will work with some people who are of legal mind, so that we get we get this issue, uh, this story about cannabis, you know, be dealt with, fine, finally, mm -hmm. because as you know, uh, they, they are they are they are they are plants that have got psychoactive properties, mm -hmm. and some of them are already being commercialized. Mm -hmm. Which is which is really unfortunate. For example, you know, you know, you know, you know, cannabis sativa here in South Africa, it's called it's called dacha. Dacha plant itself, is not, you know, it's not the same as cannabis. But there's been some work that has been done to show that that um, Leonidas Leonorus yeah. contains a little bit. You know, it contains uh, some cannabis. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So I so I'm still pursuing that from that angle. Okay. Because I know uh, that some people also who, have commercial, who are commercializing in England, who are commercializing um, uh, skeletorum, you know. Um, yeah, skeletium. Yeah, 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 which is also yeah, a, a South know, African. Yeah, yeah exactly. South African. You know what I mean? So I'm, working, yeah. I'm still working on that. But then at the same time, my, my, my interest is, is, is now very much, I've got a PhD student who's doing some work in uh, antimicrobial, antimicrobial resistance. Okay, no, so so great, mm. right? Uh, thank you. We are we are kind of coming to the end of this. So now we have this life story of uh, you know life really well lived. When you look back, um, from a, as a researcher, you know, mm -hmm. what, what legacy do would you say you've built? When you look back, what 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 have you really what have you attained? What have you achieved? It's a very difficult question, uh, Dave. You, honestly, that's a very difficult question because uh, as, as one goes through life, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, for, having having gone through what I've gone through myself as somebody from from youth and whatnot, yes. and it was a constant fight. It was a constant fight, not thinking about um, what is it that I'm hoping against, or that I would leave behind. It was just a you know constant fight. Yeah. So so you yeah. Know? But with a rear view mirror, you could say you know that the fight was worth it, um, and and that life is not easy, right? Because no. It, no. It, it, during your time, you were fighting against prejudices, and and mm -hmm. when you look at a, a younger person today, you know they they are probably fighting not necessarily those kind of. Uh, prejudices, but they are probably mm -hmm. also having other fights, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and in a sense, that's what makes it worthwhile. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's sure. what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For, for me, uh, uh, well, I could say, okay, for me, uh, uh, something that I would like to leave behind and people uh, would uh, remember me for is um, the fact that I. I, I, I have identified that there's a gap in, in the way we think as Africans in terms of critical thinking. Okay. That's lacking. Yeah, yeah. that is lacking, honestly. And it is, it's, it is because maybe because of our traditions, we don't, we were not allowed to, to ask to question. questions. Yeah, to exactly. Question. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, 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 and that really, for me, uh, is what I'm just hoping against hope that I will, the people will remember me for having um, sort of yeah. identified that we have a serious gap. Okay, so so do you do you find that maybe your grandchildren are, are immune to that? Do they ask more questions than you 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 ask oh, at your oh, age? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Then they they they, they <laughs> ask. They ask questions. I mean, you know, at these days, you know, a grandchild can tell you, ah, oh, come on, come on, come on, granddad, don't be silly. Can you imagine? <laughs> we never used to say that. And you, know, and, and you as know. granddad, you're okay with that. You're comfortable with that. I'm okay with that because I'm saying to myself, no, 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 maybe I'm being silly, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Because language okay. is a tool. Yeah, yeah. Language, language is a tool. Yeah. You've got a philosophy behind it. When somebody tells you that you have been silly, there's something that you've done <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. been silly. Yeah. Okay, so but what would you tell your younger self? Another difficult one. 
yeah. I know, but it's, it, 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 it is situational. Mm-hmm. See what I mean? It is yeah. situational. It's, it's, uh, it's very difficult. I mean, it's a very difficult. Uh, 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 it's a very difficult. Uh, it's a difficult question. Yeah, yeah. But I, I yeah. guess, I guess, you know? if if we were to go back to the time when you were saying Goromonzi, or even in in mm-hmm. in in the UK, it would just yeah. be be persistent, right? Keep. Don't be yeah. afraid. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't be afraid. In fact. Uh, you, 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 you know, don't be afraid. Uh, get up, stand up, and yeah. fight for your rights. Like what, you know, <laughs> yes, what you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, and and then, um, I mean, what's what inspires you? What in, what inspires, inspires you? These are more personal questions. You, you, you're oh, yeah. very comfortable talking about your career, but I just wanted to to really for the next, it's, you know, the next few minutes, you know, talk to the person. So what is it that inspires you or has inspired you? You know, I'll tell you something. When I was, when I was, um, when I was, when I got my associate professorship at the University of Zimbabwe, mm-hmm. okay? Uh, I, I don't know whether you, you remember Professor, the, the surgeon, the neurosurgeon, Professor- Levy. Exactly. Yes, the two Levies, yeah. Yes, the, the 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 husband. Yeah, came in came to my office. I'm trying to answer your question. Came to my office and he said to me, "Congratulations." And I said, "Thank you very much, Prof. Lev." And he says to me, "It's lonely." Okay, it's lonely. I'm trying to answer your question about in, what inspires me. He says it. He says it's very lonely up there. Mm-hmm. And over the years, I've always asked myself, what did he mean by that? What inspires me is when you have the title professor, mm-hmm. everyone expects you to talk sense. <laughs> You're on your toes all the time. Yes. Okay. Uh. And also at the same time, there are those that really want to cut you down. Mm. So you're always, so what inspires me is being on my toes all the time because I don't know who I'm talking to. Okay. There might be someone who is listening to me and so that you can then say to, you can say when I'm finished, rubbish. Yeah, okay. Or there is someone who is listening to me who will say, thank you. Mm. That's what inspires me, honestly. I'm always on my toes. Yeah. And it's so, like, like, it makes life so difficult. Mm. Yeah, mm. I understand. Yeah. So, so, and then what habits have you, do you have, which, which, you know, make you successful? I'm not successful. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you, you are, you're a legend for, for, for a lot of your, I'm, st- I'm one of your students and I've passed through, you know, and I must tell you that, um, you know, you inspired me a lot because you were this guy who just breezed into class. You were quite approachable. You, you know, you were not. Really? Yeah, you, you were not like uh, one of these uh, very, you know, stuck up, very regimented professors. And I enjoyed. Okay. You know, you'd you'd make jokes. You you'd crack jokes, and, okay. and so we always used to look forward to having you come to class. Oh, really? But, yeah. All right. Mm. All right. And and actually, but why even. Did you- or even mm. before or after that, I I watched some of the work that you did, like in terms of mm. HIV, which we haven't even got to, you know, um, mm. when you had the TV program, and and you were highly accessible, you know, to to everybody. You were not like okay. this professor right. who spoke above people, you know. I, I used okay. to watch how you were yeah. uh, you were almost like a panelist, right, with a okay. journalist. Yes, 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 yeah, yes, yes. yeah. So the you know, question was, you know, what habits um, do you have? Uh, yeah, habits of success, I guess. I, I, uh, you know, okay, I, I, I can tell you that, um, you know, I've interacted with a lot of entrepreneurs. And I've always asked myself, why is it that they've always come to me to just chat? Uh, I've got this habit 
of just allowing people to bounce off their ideas on me and tell mm -hmm. them what exactly I think. Yes. So you're honest. Yeah. With <laughs> yeah. Be honest yeah. and say, listen, yeah. I think here yeah, you're just wasting your time. But oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But be aware of A, B, C, and D. You know, just being, you know, just being, you know, someone who's, who, someone who is, uh, someone who can share information. I think that's, it's very important. You know? Yeah. Somebody who, yeah. Which, somebody which, who, which is atypical of most people. Most people just like, you know, hang on to information. But I think that's the mm. teach I knew. You teach the world as it were. Yeah. Okay. I maybe may, may, maybe uh, just briefly tell me about your forays into the business world. Because again, that's, that's also been an inspiration for me because, you, you know, like there are not a lot of professors out there who are interested in, in consumer mm. rights or even in mm. business, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah. No, I I suppose uh, I suppose you know the, the the business aspect has always come out because of my interaction with with entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Right, one entrepreneur uh, picks up picks up certain things that I can bring uh, to their to their business in terms of value. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Then you know when you then meet. With other people, when a board is then established, there are then certain people there on that particular board who say, "But you know, why don't you also come to you know, uh, okay. like for example, yes." Mm -hmm. So, so, so it, 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 it in, in terms of Zim, it started with the, with the, with, the, with, the, with the telecoms. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's a long story with yeah. with the, with the telecoms that yes. then gets established, right? There's a board that is established, and there's a people, there's a group of people that come there. Some are bankers, mm -hmm. right? And, and bankers then would invite me and say, listen, we would like you to be on a bank board. Yes. And then at the end of the day, I end up reading and understanding what you know issues concerning finance. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then and 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 and, and, and businesses, funding and all that. And then the whole thing, it's like a, it's it's a, it's a snowball. Snowballs. Yeah. Yeah, it snowballs. So it snowballs. You know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, so I'm going to ask you one very cryptic last question. Mm -hmm. What about Africa? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have a very serious problem. We have a very serious problem. My, 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 my the serious problem arises from what a, a lot of people find difficult when I say it, the sociology of poverty. Yeah, the sociology of poverty has affected us so much. And, and, and can you imagine, we are like, we are like a, 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 a naked man mm -hmm. who's sitting on a gold mine and he's saying it's mine. And then somebody's saying, no, 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 but you're sitting on gold. He said, yeah, so what? It's, it's, it's mine. We, but when somebody comes with nothing, to that naked person and says, listen, I can give you this, something that this naked person is, has never had in his life. Mm -hmm. He's prepared to stand up and allow the exploitation on the gold that he was sitting while he was naked. Mm -hmm. I, th I, th I think that is the biggest problem. We, 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 go, we go to school, we go to, we, we, we've got brilliant minds and so forth, but we don't use them in the right. That is the problem. And, you, and, and, and unfortunately for us, we do psychology, but if, if there is one subject that the, 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 the whether it, whatever colonizer uh, uh, comes in, in into Africa, if there is one subject that they really developed to find out is psychology, it is psychology. Mm -hmm. They have studied us so well that they, they know how to manipulate our minds. So how do we get and, out of that? Well, we can get out of it because we are now talking about it. Because in realizing our weakness, we gain strength. The mm -hmm. fact that we're talking about it, yeah. that's the way we're going to get out of it. Mm -hmm. 
because somebody's going to say, but isn't that, explain what you meant the other day when you were talking to David. Yeah. So we will get out of it. It's just a matter of time. Because a long time ago, we would have said, everything is okay. Everything is okay. Everything yeah. is okay. But now, now because it's we are a questioning, realization, it's a we are the realization yeah. itself. Awareness. Yeah. Yes. Prof and we will that, agree. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. We will agree in, in terms of, I mean, fundamentally, we will, shall always be in agreement. We are going to differ in detail. But as long as we agree to disagree in an agreeable manner, mm -hmm. we'll get there. Okay. On that note, Prof, I'd like to thank you. Um, you're a real legend. Um, and I, legends don't uh, legends don't know it, you know. Um, you're a, a pharmacologist, pharmacologist. And uh, so, and I, uh, you know, I hope that you continue to inspire because that's what you do. And, you know, you're of great value to, to um, this part of the world. But I think, you know, you have planted seeds across, across the world. Yeah.